Well, good morning. Welcome to Day Spring Ministry, 10 o'clock a.m. Sunday morning worship service. We're glad to have you join us on this morning. We thank God for you. I'd just like to say on behalf of Day Spring Ministries, Pastor Bill Penland and myself, Lady T, we'd like to thank you all for your financial support that you so uh, graciously have given into our ministry. We thank God for you. We do not take it lightly and we just appreciate you and we give you a big hug. We can't touch you physically, but let's do it in the spirit. I just love you all and I thank you for being consistent, coming in at 10 o'clock a.m. in the morning and listening to us, joining us and listening what thus saith the Lord from our very own pastor, Pastor Bill Penland. Truly, I just want to give him kudos this morning because truly God has invested something into our man of God. Do you love your man of God? I love our man of God because God has placed him here amongst us for a purpose. And if God has assigned you to listen to him on Sundays, Wednesdays, whenever he has a word from the Lord, be obedient and do just that because truly you will be blessed. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So, Pastor Bill, we just want to let you know this morning, we want to throw a little love on you. We love you with the love of the Lord, and we ask God to continually bless you. Amen and amen. Also, I'd like to say hello to Brother Phil Lewis, and I'd like to say hello to Sister Cecilia Penland. These are people that are close to my heart, and they support the ministry, and I just want them to know that Pastor Bill and I love them with the love of the Lord, and also my sister Mia. I mean, some of these people are out of state, some of them are in state, but sometimes you just, you know, you get in trouble throwing out names, Sister Stephanie um, Norfleet, Edwards Norfleet. We thank God for you. We thank God for those that support us. Now let's get started with talking about today's message. God is so awesome. The topic for this morning is when Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house. The lesson text is taken from Mark, the second chapter, verses 1 to through five. That's Mark, second chapter, verses one through five. And I will read it in your hearing from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. Fifth and final verse, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. On this fine Sunday morning, I give you the man of the hour, none other than Pastor Bill, the pastor of Day Spring Ministries. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Sister Penland. Lady T. God bless all you, right, Pastor. All right. Hey, God bless you this morning. So good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Yes. I know this is not the house of uh, the church where we worship, but this is how the church is worshiping now. So I'm grateful for this platform. Yes. I'm grateful for those of you that are watching. Amen. Truly, I, I, I love the Lord and I'm just, I thank him yes. for the gift of salvation. I thank him for the precious gift, the Holy Ghost, how God can lead, guide, and direct your lives, how he can get your attention when things are going contrary to his will and he trying to put you on the right path. His word tells us that he would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So I'm grateful for him and for all the things that he's doing in the lives of believers. Amen, somebody. Listen, let us pray. Father, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, how you have blessed us and kept us through this time of pandemic, these last seven, eight months, God, however long it's been. We know, God, that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, that nothing can happen unless you allow it to happen. And, Father, there are times where we don't always agree with our circumstances, but we know that we can turn and talk to you. We can come to you about any and everything as it pertains to our life, oh God. So, Father, this morning I ask that you, being every word spoken, that you will anoint these lips of clay, that 
I may say something to bless your people, to strengthen your people, to encourage your people, O oh God. We need you in such a time as this. For many patients are running short. Things are happening in the political world. Things are happening in the natural world. Things are happening in the spiritual world. And we know, God, that you can lead us through all of it without hurt, harm, nor danger. God, you have a keeping power that's unique to, to many, that, that, that you are able to protect us in the midst of chaos and craziness, oh God. So God, we just thank you for that today. And Lord, as we go forward, again, being every word spoken, in Jesus' name, let something be said that will strengthen. Yes. If one is hearing that is not saved, save today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. If there's a backslider, bring them in, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Amen, amen. On this week, while I was out taking care of some business and thinking about things, I saw an incident that somebody needed some help uh, medically, and, and you look at what's going on, and it kind of made me think back to when I was a kid and I would watch some of these old movies. And you know, an incident would happen in the saloon, somebody would get shot, beat up, or knocked out, somebody would turn and holler, is there a doctor in the house? You know, you watch some of those old theaters and some of those old shows where they're in the theater and something would happen, a lady would faint for whatever reason, and whoever she was with would turn and say, is there a doctor in the house? Well, I just want to encourage you this morning. I believe that there is a doctor in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we look at our text today, we see that in Mark 2 and 15, there's a situation here. A man is on a cot stricken with palsy. Palsy, and, and his friends are taking him. They heard that Jesus was in town, and they're taking him to see Jesus. And so when we look at situations that are happening around us, we look at situations that are going on, and we have friends who are perplexed or distressed or, or stressed out. Are we taking them to Jesus? Are we bringing Jesus to them? What is it that we're doing? I mean, you know, sometimes people are crying out for different reasons, and, and I, I like to think of it that they're asking, is there a doctor in the house? You know, when we see drug addicts on the corner, or we see people uh, doing involved and caught up in different things, they're, they're crying out, asking, is there a doctor in the house? And so a lot of times, you know, I, I look at situations and I think back when I was in trouble emotionally, psychologically, uh, alcoholic, you know, a, a drug addict. I was crying out sometimes for different situations, wondering where I could get help. And where it seemed like I could get my most help was to indulge in what I was doing. It seemed like that brought me peace, brought me comfort. But in my spirit, man, I was really crying out, is there a doctor in the house? Are you hearing me, somebody? Sometimes we look at the doctors when they would show up, especially in these movies or these different situations. They would come in and they could remedy the problem and, and, and help bring that person back to sobriety or bring that person back to, to normal and they would help them get on their feet and carry them out. Other times, there were times where the doctor in the movie with his medical skills, with all that he was capable of doing, he was not able to remedy the problem and that person might have died or that person had to be carried on to the hospital to continue the work that the doctor started. He was successful in some cases but there and again he was not successful in other cases. And so I believe those movies back then pre predicted or, or, or they, they meant that they showed what happened quite often in real life. Sometimes a person finds himself in a situation where he needs a doctor. And that doctor is able to help them in the moment. Has anybody here ever been to a doctor? Hallelujah. Just the other day, I walked into Rite Aid. And while I was there taking care of business, picking up some things that I wanted, I saw that they were giving away flu shots. And yes, I took the flu shot. You know, and so looking at what we're dealing with, looking at what we're going on, I just want to set myself up for protection. There was nothing that happened that day, no, no incident, no nothing. There was no need for a doctor, but I was surprised the pharmacist was able to give me a few fuel shot. Not the girl behind the counter, because she didn't qualify, but the pharmacist was qualified. He was able to remedy me with what I needed. He was able to give me what I needed. But quite often, when we look at people who are sick, when we look at people who maybe have hurt themselves, the doctor is not in position 
to remedy them spiritually. He may be able to help them physically. You know, the doctor can put a cast on a limb. The doctor can maybe stitch you up where you cut yourself. The doctor may be able to fix a whole lot of problems and prescribe medication, which they seemingly do oh so well. Want to want to write you a prescription for this? Want to write you a prescription for that? You got an eyelash in your eye, and he want to write you a prescription. The doctors seem to be able to handle everything in the natural pretty well, but when it comes to your spiritual life, there's not very much that the doctor can do. Amen, somebody. You know the doctor who. Who, 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 who can put that cast on your arm, can set your wrists and set your fingers and so it grow back and through the process of time it looked like nothing has ever happened. But those who have been broken emotionally by maybe even the same circumstance, the doctor is not the one who can fix that. Sometimes it takes a psychiatrist or a psychologist to be able to talk to a person, to reason with a person to get them to delve into the problems, the initial problems that came on and touched them that caused so many other problems. But even there and again, sometimes that particular doctor is not able to help you. But I know a doctor who can help you physically, who can help you emotionally, who can help you psychologically, and most of all, who can help you spiritually. And his name is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. And so when we look at Dr. Jesus, I believe that there's nothing that Dr. Jesus can't do. So in our text this morning, we see that Jesus is in Capernaum, the Bible says in verse 1. It says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive him, no, no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. In other words, they couldn't get through the door. And so Jesus was in there and he was preaching the word of God, the Bible says in verse 2. He, was, he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. In other words, you had a man on a cot who was sick with palsy and he had four friends carrying him. And so when they could not come nigh unto Jesus for the press, it was too many people in front of the door, they uncovered the roof where he was, where Jesus was, and when they had broken it up, they had let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, the Bible says, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sin be forgiven. So when we look at this, Jesus in Capernaum preaching the gospel, preaching and teaching the word of God. The news has spread abroad that Jesus was there and what he was doing. And people were coming from all around to hear and see this man, Jesus. Now, let me say something about that. Jesus was in this place preaching, hearing the word, and people were gathering. Sometimes you don't hear the person say, I'm going to be there. Somebody else is telling them where they can find the word of God. Somebody else is telling them where they can find Jesus and people were coming. That's something we need to put a pen in. That's something we need to think about because we are a people talking to people all the time. Are we telling people where they can find Jesus? Are we telling people how they can find Jesus? So let me say that, that we need to be a people sharing the good news of gospel. If we've had a relationship with Jesus Christ, if we've had an experience with Jesus Christ, we need to tell somebody. The Bible says we've overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Are you hearing me, somebody? You know, these folks were bringing this man who was sick of palsy. They, they, they were bringing him who was sick of palsy on a cot, and they were taking him to see Jesus. Why? Because they knew Jesus could help him in his situation. Do you know anybody that has a situation that possibly Jesus can help? They tried this, they tried that, they tried this, and none of it seems to be working. They've been crying out for a long time. Is there a doctor in the house? And they're not getting any action on that. So now they need Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? I believe that people are needing Jesus and not knowing that they're needing Jesus. But how can they hear except somebody preaching? Hey, Amen. Talking about you. We are all ministers of reconciliation. When these folks came to 
hear Jesus. When they came to see Jesus, they were looking to hear, hear somebody who could tell them something to encourage them about their plight in life. They were looking for somebody who would heal their friend about his plight in life. But I believe Jesus is the one that can do that. You know, when, when, when this pandemic is over and people are on their way back to church, they need to know that Jesus is in the house. They don't need to come to see a show. Yes, we want the choir to sing. We want the praise team to sing. We want everything nice and decent in order. But it's not necessary that we have smoke-filled, fog-filled rooms and flashing lights and, and, and a whole entertainment section going on. People are coming to hear the word of God. Why? Because in these last and evil days, we need Jesus. We need the word of God. We need to take in that word of God. We need to hear that word of God and absorb the word of God. That we can find ourselves rooted and grounded in him. Amen, somebody. These four men. Born upon their shoulders, this man who was sick with palsy on a cot. They didn't come to see a show. They came to see a Savior. They, these four men who brought their sick friend to Jesus. You know, I, I, I think about that. I think about that. Brother would come by the house and ask me to come hear him preach. He knew my lifestyle. He knew what I was caught up in. He knew what I was dealing with. And he would say, come hear me preach. Come hear me preach. And I'd shine him on. I'd pass him on. I'd, you know, say, oh, yeah, well, maybe one day, you know, catch me when something else, when my life's a little different. I'm cool right now. I, and he'd come on back by almost once a month. He'd come by and say, come hear me preach. And he'd share with me how God did what he did in his life, how God delivered him from a seven-year bout with PCP, how God changed his life. And through the process of time of him coming by month after month, I began to see something that not only was he telling me, but God was showing me. And let me know that what God can do for one, he can do for another. And I don't know what these men have saw Jesus do, but they saw something powerful enough to make them put their friend on their shoulders and bring him to Jesus. They weren't coming to see a show. They were coming to see a Savior. And I want to let you know that it's good to have friends who will bring you to Jesus. I say it's good to have friends who will bring you to Jesus. Amen. It's good to have faithful friends who, when you are down and out, can bring you into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're not able to be with that person like we're living in this situation right now. But there are many people that my wife and I day in and day out lift their names up before the Lord and we're praying for them. Why? Because we want to bring them into the presence of of the Lord. Amen, somebody. You know, the Bible says in the text that the crowd was so thick that they were not able to get into the front door. And you know, sometimes church can be just like that. You can go to a particular church and there's a line wrapped around the corner waiting to get inside and, and, and you can't get in. And, and so therefore, maybe you find somewhere else to go or the crowd is so thick that you, you get in and you get to the parking lot, you get in and you just for some reason, it's packed out. It's standing room only. Mm -hmm. And then you find out that a lot of times, everybody at church, they're not there for a church. I said everybody at church are not there for a church. You say, what you talking about, preacher? Well, as I examined the text on this morning, as I examined the text on this morning, and I looked over the last 35 years of my life being saved, I said, everybody at church is not there for the purpose of church. What do you mean? They said, well, there are some who are just there to hear the choir. You see, the they get there on time. You see, the choir comes up, the praise team come up. They listen to the praise team. They enjoy the music. They enter the worship. They hear the choir come. And when the choir comes, they enjoy the songs. And they get in the groove of the choir. And they go through the yeah, 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 you know, and they have a great time with the choir. Then when it's time for the word of God, they ease up and they tip out and you don't see them no more. And it seems to be on a regular basis with some folks. So they're not there for the word of God. They're not there to hear what Jesus is saying. They're here for a particular purpose that's contrary. Well, I don't want to say contrary, but they're here for a particular purpose that is not designed what the church is truly designed for. The church is about the word of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. That word was with God and that word was God. In the 14th verse of, verse of John chapter 1, it says, And that word became flesh and dwelt among us, talking about Jesus. 
Jesus is the word. So when the preacher is standing up preaching, he's talking about Jesus. And in most cases, the Holy Spirit is ministering Jesus to the congregation, all those who are listening. Amen, somebody. But a lot of people are not there for that. They're there for the choir. They're there for networking, trying to expand their business potential. They're there for meeting their next husband or their next wife. And they're there for socializing. They, they want to socialize in a, what seems to be and appears to be a decent group of people. People who are about something and doing something. It's all about socialization. It's not about Jesus. They're there because they want to show off their latest fashionable outfit. You know, they're confused for why they should be there. And they, 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 they're part of it and they're tied into it, but they're there for all the wrong reasons. And everybody's not interested in what saith the Lord. Everybody's not interested in what God can do in their lives. They say, hey, I got a great job. I'm doing okay. Hey, I've got a beautiful home. I'm doing okay. Hey, I got this working. My business is doing fine. I'm doing okay. Everything is good. You know, I just I just come in to get a little praise, get my praise on, and I gotta get out of here because I got stuff to do today. You know, I got I came in to get get my shout on because you know this happened and that happened, and I'm cool, and I just want to get out of here today. You know, and, and so they're not there for what thus saith the Lord. You know, the crowd in the text was blocking the doorway, so the men who were on a mission. They had purpose in their heart. They wanted to get their friend to Jesus, but the cloud, the crowd, the Bible says, was blocking the door. And so these men had to figure something else out because the crowd was blocking the door. So in a lot of churches, there's a crowd that's blocking people from getting to Jesus. I say in a lot of churches, there's a crowd that's blocking people from getting to Jesus. Oh, they get in the way. You're trying to get in to worship. You're trying to get in to praise the Lord of your salvation. You're trying to get in to hear a word because you need strength anew because you just went through one heck of a week prior to this. And you know next week is going to look like last week. And last week looked like the week before that. And you're under a great deal of pressure. And you're trying to get a word from Jesus. But there's a crowd blocking. There's a crowd hindering others from getting to Jesus. The text said that when they could not come nigh because of the press, they open up the roof. See, when you got faith in your heart and you're on a mission, God has set something so deep in, 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 in your heart that you feel it running through your bones and your fingers and, and you know there's a need there. You have to learn how to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You have to learn how to press. Some people find themselves with an obstacle in their way and they just stop and they give up. And you have to ask yourself, did they really want what they said they want? How bad do you need what you need? How hard are you willing to press to get where God is trying to take you? How much are you willing to put effort in to get there? These four men bearing a cart on their shoulders with their friends sick with palsy, they found themselves where they couldn't get through the door. Faith is funny. Faith has will make you do things that you wouldn't normally do. Faith sometimes, when there's an obstacle in your way, faith will take you under the obstacle. Faith will take you around the obstacle. Faith will take you over the obstacle. But what faith will do is prepare you and propel you to make a move. Hallelujah. The Bible says without, with, with, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And these four men were men of faith. So when they couldn't get through the door, they went up to the rooftop. Hallelujah. They went up to and broke a hole through the ceiling. We're living in a day where we need to know how to be ceiling breakers, where there's ceilings that are placed over us, ceilings that are in our way, keeping us at a certain level, not allowing us to progress, not allowing us to go forward, not allowing us to move, want to, want to keep us, want to stop us, but we have to be ceiling breakers. And by faith, we can break through those barriers, break through those ceilings, and, and get where God is trying to take us. Are you hearing me, somebody? These four men took this man who was sick with palsy, took him up on the rooftop and dug a hole in the roof, and then let the man down through the roof on the cot. 
Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. Faith will take you around some mountains and over some hills and through the valley. Faith will take you places that just in your ingenuity, in your way of thinking, mm -hmm. you can't get there on your own. Are you hearing me, somebody? Mm -hmm. I tell you, great things happen when Jesus is in the house. Great things happen when Jesus is in the house. You know, they let that man down in front of Jesus. I could see Jesus looking up, smiling at these men, saying, wow, these dudes got faith into a hole in these people's house, into a hole in these people's room. <laughs> he said, I got to do something here. Sometimes when we bombard heaven, God sees our faith, and, you know, he may not want to answer. He hadn't answered in a while. He hadn't, you know, he knows that there's been roadblocks in our way, and, and we've been trying to get to him, trying to get to him, trying to get to him, and it just seemed like he doesn't, he hasn't answered you know, and, 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 and but we're trying, and then all of a sudden he, he sees where we break through. Sometimes breaking through is letting stuff go. Sometimes breaking through is stepping away from those who are holding us back. Stepping around those who are getting in our way. Maybe climbing over a few situations that are, have been hindering us and blocking us and, 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 and going forward and moving. And, and we, 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 we were stuck on trying to get to where God is. And, and so Jesus saw their faith. And when he saw their faith, he says, son. Which lets me know that there's a relationship there. Let's me know that these were believers they weren't just coming to see. They weren't just coming following because there was an attraction there. They weren't coming for a show. There was a relationship there. He said, son, thy sins are forgiven. Which blew the minds of the Pharisees. And Jesus asked the Pharisees, well, would it have been better had I just said, you know, take up thy bed and walk? But there was something that that man needed that went deeper than his physical situation. And so Jesus spoke to his spirit and said, son, thy sins are forgiven. Thank you. See, when you go to God in faith, we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When we're people of God and, and we believe in God, it seems like the enemy always want to throw a curve in our, in, our, in our life. He wants to throw a curve in the things that we're doing. He wants to throw a curve to where we have to kind of go around some things. But how many of you know quite often what the devil means for evil? God can turn it around for your good. See, a lot of times things don't always work out the way that we want them to work out. Things don't always work out the way that we think they should. You know, one day we're healthy and the next day we're diagnosed with a terrible situation, a terrible illness. One day we have a job and then one day we're furloughed or laid off. One day our home is peaceful and everything seems to be going good and the next day the house is filled with chaos. Something broke loose and we don't understand it and we're trying to figure it out. There's a real enemy out there that we deal with who wants to hinder us from getting to Jesus and that's why over the last several weeks I've been preaching about prayer. Because see when you pray, you stay. Mm -hmm. When you pray, you can get focused on the things of God. You can get focused on the promises of God. And you may not have heard God's promise audibly in your ear or, or in your spirit, but if you're reading your Bible, there are some promises that God made you through the scripture that you can hold on to and you can stand fast in and you can separate yourself from all that that's not like God. Step into the place of righteousness where he made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you can say, Lord, I'm yours. Everything I've got and everything I'm not. And, and, and then God showed me what it is that's hindering me in my walking, God will show it to me. Say, God, show me what it is that you would have me to do. And God will bring somebody in your life to kind of walk you through some things to help you get where he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. God has a way of proving himself. So one day we're healthy. One day we have a job. One day we're at peace. And then the next day something happens that seems to just blow all of that up. What do you do? When life takes a turn and you seem to be bombarded by an av avalanche of perplexing problems, situations, and circumstances that just come in out of nowhere, what do you do when you can't get through the front door to Jesus? You want to go, but you can't get there. I've gone through some stressful days in my life. 
I've gone through what I consider to be some terrible times in my life. Things were so crazy at one point I got on my knees to pray and I began my prayer by saying one, two, three, four. I started counting and I'm like, what's wrong with me? But that's how great the pressure was on my life. And I had to stop, open my Bible up to Psalms 1 that says, Blessed is the man that walketh not under the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, 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 and I went on, I began to read that, and I began to say, Lord, you know, you positioned me here. You positioned me here. You saved me. I cried out, and you saved me. You delivered me. You set me free. And it put me in a mindset to say, thank you, Jesus. It put me in a mindset to give God praise. And that pressure momentarily seemed to back up off of me to where I could begin to think and talk to God about what was on my heart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to press on by faith and press in by faith. Pray, prayer and, 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 and knowing the word of God, knowing where to go in the word of God, having that relationship, knowing Jesus, having that relationship can take you around some obstacles, can take you over some obstacles, can take you above some obstacles, maybe even take you under some obstacles. We can't deny that the obstacles are there, but it's how we deal with those obstacles by faith. Amen, somebody. See, faith caused these men to look at the problem. The door was blocked. And as these men looked at the door, faith gave them an unction to do something different. So they went up to the rooftop and they tore a hole in the roof and lowered their friend down through the hole. Mm -hmm. They took the initiative and made it to Jesus anyhow. Jesus being the source of our blessings. Jesus being the power within us that worketh the will to do to his good pleasure. Jesus being our healer for our emotional situations. Our healer for our psychotic informations. Healer for our psychological information. Healer for our physical and, and, and situations. Jesus is him. Jesus is who we need. We need to stop looking to others for help in different situations and always turning and, and trying to figure out, well, 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 what is Joe doing over there? Maybe Joe can help me out in this situation. What is Betty doing over there? Maybe Betty can help me out in this situation. Just bow down on your knees and, 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 and cry out to God. God is our source, not a resource. God is not second best or third best who we go to. God is number one. And God needs to be number one in our life. Amen, somebody. These men took the initiative and, and went straight to Jesus. Even though the door was blocked, they found another way to get to him. Matthew 17 and 20 says, Faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. There was a roadblock at the door. And for four men carrying dead weight on a cot, that crowd probably seemed like a mountain when they got there. But faith got them over the mountain. Faith is the vehicle that one rides that leads to salvation. It tells us that it's for by grace you're saved through faith. Faith can open doors that no man can shut. It can close doors that no man can open. Faith says, when I'm sick in my body, I will trust in the Lord. Job said in 13 and 15, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Are y'all hearing me, somebody? Faith, even though these people get on my nerves, God can strengthen me that he might be glorified. In other words, if I go to God, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with a challenge. I'm dealing with people who are frustrating me in my way. And if I go to God with my problem, God will say, I'll give you the strength. Paul went to God three times about a particular situation. God told him, my grace is sufficient. What, he, what is he saying? He's saying, I've given you everything you need pertaining to life and godliness to deal with this. And if you just grab hold to it like you should, bow down in prayer and say, thank you for the strength that you've given me, Lord. God will give you how to deal with those people. And, 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 and your good works, the people will see. And God will glorify. The people will see, and God will be glorified. Because God knows what you're dealing with. But God knows what he put in you to deal with. Faith says we might be small, 
but we can build on any situation because our God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Amen, somebody. Now, as we get ready to close, hallelujah, there's some things I want you to understand. Not only did Jesus heal this man, but also he forgave his sins. In other words, he saw his faults and saw his needs. Mm -hmm. This man did not need the physical healing as bad as he needed the spiritual healing. The text demonstrates that Jesus is God. So when we go to Jesus, we're going to God. We need to understand that, that Jesus is God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Over in Colossians, it says that the world was made by him and for him. And if it was made by him and for him, he understands it. So he stands with expectation once he is poured out as it out of his spirit and we have received it he stands with expectation knowing that if we're in his word he has strengthened us to get done what it is he desires for us to do amen and where we struggle with it if we are praying God will give us direction he'll be that lamp unto our feet and that light unto our pathway and I always tell you this eight, Psalms 84 and 11 says that he will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him that's what we need to know he will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. These four men, not only did they walk upright before him, but they walked right up before him. Amen. And they dropped their friend right in front of him. And Jesus saw their faith and healed their friend. And not only healed their friend physically, but healed their friend spiritually. Hallelujah. The man was set free totally and completely. He was able to sing the song, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. Oh, what a blessing. It's so refreshing. Hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah. How many of y'all can sing that song? How many of y'all can sing that song with me? How many of you got attachments that you need to shake off and get rid of? All you got to do is bring it to Jesus. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. Hallelujah. This man was healed physically and spiritually. The text demonstrates that Jesus is God. And we need to believe that. We need to hold on to that. We need to understand that the man would not have been healed had Jesus not been in the house. They could have went to the house and there could have been a crowd there. And, and, and had Jesus not been there, the man would have not gotten healed. The man would have been carried away on his cot. Just like he was carried to the house, they'd had to carry him from the house had Jesus not been in the house. The man who would have spent the rest of his life on the cot had Jesus not been in the house. And there's somebody watching today who needs a healing, who needs deliverance in their body, who needs deliverance spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. And I want to let you know today that Jesus is in the house. I said Jesus is in the house. It was in the house where Mary wiped the feet of Jesus with her hair. It was in the house where Jesus healed Potter, Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. It was in the house where Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. It was in the house that Doubting Thomas became a believer. It was in the house that Jesus healed two blind men. It was in the house that Jesus instituted the Lord's Prayer. It was in the house that the man of our text was healed. It was in the house where Jesus preached the Word of God. I said, great things can happen when Jesus is in the house. But y'all not hearing me. I said, great things can happen when Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house, we can live better. When Jesus is in the house, we can love better. When Jesus is in the house, we can forgive better. When Jesus is in the house, we can be and live on one accord. When Jesus is in the house, catch this now, souls can be saved. Some of y'all got family members that need to be saved. Yeah. Is Jesus in the house? Some of y'all got friends that need to be saved. Yeah. Is Jesus in the house? Some of y'all got friends that need to be delivered, bound by drugs and alcohol and, and just, just the sins of the world. Is Jesus in the house? Souls can be saved when Jesus is in the house. And that's truly what it was all about. It was in the house where I gave my heart to the Lord. It was in the house where Jesus saved me and delivered me and set me free from the grips of hell. It was in the house where I gave my heart to the Lord and he broke the shackles off of my life. It was in the house. And I want to let you know that great things can happen when Jesus is in the house. Amen. I'm done. Listen. Glory to God.
I don't know what you're dealing with this morning. I don't know what your challenges are. But these four men believed that Jesus could heal their friend, and Jesus did just that. I don't know if you have a friend or if it's you who maybe is in trouble right now, who maybe is battling a problem right now. I don't know what your situation is, but you do. And my question is, is Jesus in the house? If he's not, let's invite him in. You do that through confessing that you're a sinner. You do that by way of asking him to come into your heart. You, have, you do that by saying, save me, Jesus. I'm a sinner. I need your love. I need your grace. I need your mercy. And he'll come in and he will save you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you right now for the word that was spoken. I thank you for these that are watching. We pray, Father, that those who are in need of deliverance, those who are in need of healing, can receive their healing now. These four men believed that Jesus was the Son of God. These four men believed that Jesus could heal their friend, and their friend received healing. And so, God, my friends who are watching right now, I pray, God, deliverance falls in their house this morning. I pray that healing falls in their house this morning. I pray that healing in a mighty, powerful way falls in their house this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, those of you who are not saved, I want you to repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for the wrong that I've done, the sins that I've committed. I believe that you're the son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. After three days dead, you were raised from the grave and you're in heaven making intercession for me. Save me, Jesus. Save me. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. If you said that prayer and you meant it from your heart, you are saved. I want to thank you for your time. I know there's many other places you could have been and many other things you could have done. But I want to thank you for your time and I appreciate you. Tune in again next week. We'll be here Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, probably the beginning of next month, we'll move it to Wednesday night. There's a lot going on, and I need to be able to balance my time a little better. So we just pray that, you know, pray for us, and we're praying for you. Amen. God bless you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sunday, September 20, 2020, Mark 2, 1 and 5, when Jesus is in the house. Oh, I have a subtopic for y'all this morning. Ceiling breakers. Glory to God. We have to be ceiling breakers. We need to break through. We need to break through. Do you want to get your friend to Jesus? Hallelujah. People need Jesus who are unaware that they even need Jesus. You need to testify. Don't hold back. It may, it just may save a soul. Continue to press through the obstacles of life. Faith will bring about victory. Glory to God. If you follow the message, it will tell you when we get to God, we get all that we need. This man in the text was given and was blessed both spiritually and physically. What a word. What a word. Take it in and be blessed. Hallelujah. Take it in and be blessed. God is an awesome God. I tell you, God is our source. Everything else is what? Say it with me. A resource. Let's say it again. God is a source. Everything else. God is our source. Everything else is a mere resource. And God, we thank you from the very depths, from the inner sanction of our hearts. We want you to share this message with your family, with your friends on this morning. Pastor Bill and I want you to press share so that this message can go out even worldwide. God is doing something new and we are being blessed by it. Share the blessing. Share the blessing. Amen. You need to testify. If God has truly brought you through, you need to tell somebody, hallelujah, because it's not going to be you. It's going to be the power of the Holy Spirit working through you, hallelujah, to get that word out to men, women, boys, and girls so that their lives can be changed by the power, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. 
God is in this place. And I thank God for the word that never, that won't return back unto him void. It will do that what it is set out to do. Hallelujah. It will establish itself because the word is already established. Hallelujah. And we thank God. So hit that share button. Share the word of God with those that you love and with those who are frenemies, those who may call themselves enemies. Give them something to something to think about and let God move on their spirits and move on their hearts and let that word marinate like it's marinating in our hearts on today. Amen. Gigi, I just want to say we love you today. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you. We graciously give you an embrace because you support us so heavily every Sunday and on Tuesdays when we have our Bible study. I want you to remember forthcoming, uh, the Bible study will be probably going on to a Wednesday night. We will keep you posted, so stay in tune and stay in touch. Periodically, I would that you visit the website, www.dayspring.ch. Send your prayer request. You can ask for prayer. You can send your prayer request. You can find out what's going on at Breakthrough Church because God is truly doing big things. Hallelujah. And we want you to be on board with it. Also, Sister Missy, we want to say we love you. We love you, my Sister Missy. We love you so much. And I'm, I've been saying names today, but that's what I'm going to do today. And I hope nobody gets mad, but Charlene, you know we, mwah, mwah, we love you with your beautiful blonde self. Hey, Amen. We just love those that tune in and and, and get the word with us. And we know that you're being blessed. You're getting your, at least your minimum daily requirements when you listen to this word at Day Spring Ministries on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. Now, I'll give you the opportunity to be even further blessed. If you desire to pay your tithe on this morning, we all know that tithe is 10% of our uh, income, 10% of our increase, as the word tells us. You may go to the website, www.dayspring.ch, and press on to give. There are various ways that you can give. You can also text to give to Dayspring M, all caps, Dayspring M, to the number 206-859-9405. Text to give Dayspring M, the letter M is in Mary, all caps. Text to 206 Eight five nine nine four zero five. You can go to Giverify. Dayspring now has a PO box. Dayspring Ministries, PO box four three two, Menifee, California nine two five eight six. PO box four three two, Menifee, California nine two five eight six. I love my sister Mia. I want you to know that we love you and we're praying for you. Amen. Continue to be prayerful. Pray for someone. Find someone that you know that may be going through or ask the Lord to lay someone on your heart so that you can pray for them so that others can be healed, saved, and delivered. Amen. We love you with the love of the Lord. Reminder, faithfulness is the price of the crown. Let us all do our very best to support the entire program of our church. We want to see you on Sundays as well as throughout the week. Pastor Bill and I love you. Odell, we love you. So we'll see you again, same time, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock a.m., Day Spring Ministries. You know where to send your tithe and your offering. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. See you soon.